Greetings everyone, this is Ehav Ever from the Chronicles of Ehav Ever and uh, today I'm going to be starting a few different things on uh, these video blogs that I'm keeping up with. Uh, some things that have happened in the past few weeks have made me kind of consider that one of the things I do need to start doing all my video logs is actually talking about uh, the situation here in Israel um, in terms of just I guess not as much like a quality of life thing, but more of just what is it like to be an Israeli, um, especially an Israeli like myself, who made the choice to actually move back here. You know, made a choice to, uh, in a sense, you know, make my life here as compared to someone who was born here and this is kind of where they live. So in the next few, I guess, blogs or vlogs, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about. Um, I guess politics. I mean, and partially I kind of don't like talking about politics, but uh, I mean, I know that what I'm going to talk about in the next few videos will probably cause some people to like put some very nasty stuff about it uh, because people take this whole Middle Eastern situation very strongly. And um, it's understandable. So, but you know, one thing I would like to say for anyone watching this video if you've never yourself lived in the Middle East, um, if you've never lived here for any substantial amount of time if you just visited you know if you've never lived here it's you trust me you don't know what's really happening here unless you've actually lived here long enough uh, you don't really have a clear picture of what's going on because the media in the West definitely is not telling you about the things that happen here good or bad you know they kind of tell you what will spark the most emotional response from you uh, based on what they want you to do and what they want you to know so I'm going to kind of talk about it from my perspective and you know like I said people can disagree with the way I look at things but you know this is my perspective and you know, because it's my perspective it's a valid perspective Okay, so you may ask the question, you know, why all of a sudden, you know, do I want to start talking about, um, I guess, the situation of the Middle East? Um, I think one of the reasons um, is because uh, one of the things I wrote about on my written blog, Chokmo uh, and Musar, um, was concerning how uh, not too long ago I was on my way to Betel, uh, which is like um, a town which is like a little bit further north into the Shomoron area. Of Israel. Um, nowadays people will call this area the West Bank but I don't consider it the West Bank uh, and I'll talk about that more later of why I don't consider there to be a Palestinian state um, but I ended up uh, almost ac pretty much accidentally taking a wrong turn into Ramallah and um, you know R Ramallah is, for a Jew is not the place that you want to be um, because there have been Jews who have made wrong turns into Ramallah and have been beaten up, uh, been stoned uh, by you know Arabs who live there. Um, and this is not to make it seem as if every, every Arab in Ramallah is a bad person, but it's Ramallah, Ramallah for a Jew is a very dangerous place to enter um, and to drive into. And I actually drove into it. And you know I remember when we drove into the entrance, there's a big, uh, there's a lot of graffiti on the walls like, as you go in that basically one of them I remember said kill all the Jews another one was like the Jews smell like pigs and you know, a lot of stuff about destroying us you know killing us and all that kind of stuff and um, you know luckily I didn't stay in Ramallah long enough to like have anything happen but it definitely was something that was an eye-opener um, towards the reality of living here uh, you know because otherwise you know you go to the mall you do things and you know the terror you know the things that do happen on the news that you hear about you know there are places in Israel where there's more contact with what would be called the you know I would call some of the conflicts that do exist here in the Middle East um, but for the most part you know I mean I like living here and it's a good place to live and for me it's no more dangerous than like you know certain parts of you know anywhere in the West where there's crime and things like that you can equate terrorism to crime on some level and that may give you a way of understanding um, what our experiences are like you know
So for those of you who live in the West, um, who've never either traveled to the Middle East or lived in the Middle East, um, there's one question I think that you all should ask yourself when you watch the news, um, and especially this is true when you hear anything that comes up about Israel. Ask yourself the question, in terms of, if you look at a map, if you look at how big Israel is compared to like a lot of other countries in the world, as well as like as compared to the uh, countries in the Middle East uh, that are controlled either by Arabs or Muslims, uh, when you look at the size of Israel, Israel is probably just a little bit bigger, I think they're a little bit smaller than New Jersey. Um, you know, so if you take the time to really make a comparison, the question I think every one of you should ask yourself is why is the world so concerned about a piece of land that is so small? Um, you know, when you look at like natural resources here in Israel, we don't have any oil here, or not, you know, accessible oil. We don't have like gold, you know, we don't have anything that the world has to have to where you would, you know, think that if, you know, if we had, you know, oil, like a lot of oil, for example, you could then understand why the world is so concerned what happens here in Israel. But we don't have that, you know. If you can understand if there was like some huge gold supply, you know, that the world would be so concerned about what happens in, you know, in this part of the Middle East because of the gold. But we don't have anything that, for the most part, the world looks at and says we have to have that because it only comes from Israel. Um, the only thing that's really here on that level is the, the spirituality issues, you know, in terms of, you know, let's face it, Israel is, you know, when you look at the Bible, even when you look at the Quran, you know, both of them state that Israel was to be, you know, the home nation of, you know, the Bnei Israel, or, the, you know, the descendants of Israel, the children of Israel, you know, which, you know, we as Jews, you know, you know as Israelis, that's who we are. Um, you know, and later on I'll talk about the people who claim that we aren't, um, but, you know, regardless, that's who we are. So the question, you know, like I said before, is why is the world so concerned about a place that ha that doesn't give it any resources, in a sense, that, you know, is so valuable to them? You know, and that's something I think that for those of you who live in the West, you have, really have to ask yourself, why is it so, why is this area so important to the world, um, to where one side gets villainized versus another to where, you know, countries, you know, put so much effort into supposedly bringing peace to the region. You know, when you look at the, the, the area, there are pretty much like 23 countries that are either Arab-controlled Arab or Islamic-controlled, you know, or kind of both. And one country that's Jewish. Only one. And it's smaller than most of the Arab countries in this region. So why is it so important? You know, why does it make such a big deal to the world? what happens here. Um, you know, so well, that's something I'm going to talk about um, in maybe the next couple of videos. Um, so it's something to look forward to.